So I'm getting questions every single day about John, what's going to happen with the 2025 real estate market? Do a lot of research, do a lot of reading, listen to a lot of videos. So I'm going to give you my opinion, which I am by far not an expert, but these are the things, some of the points that I see that are going to affect the real estate market here in the central Florida, the west coast of Florida. Now, I can't tell you what's going to happen in Kansas, New York, California, um, but in our Florida real estate market here, the Sarasota, Parish, Venice area, this is what I see happening. Um, hey, by the way, if you found me here on uh, YouTube, my name is John Bice. I am a real estate agent in this area, have been for the past 19 years. And um, I also am with the Florida for Boomers Network. So we market really heavily to baby boomers who are retiring and looking to either relocate or become snowbirds in this area. So um, we help people sell homes in this area and we help people find the perfect community for them. So I want to talk to you about what's going to happen in the uh, market here. Baby boomers is going to be a huge effect on what's happening, has been for several years, probably the past 15 years, actually. Um, did you know 10,000 baby boomers per day retire? I believe that's going to go on for 10 more years um, at least. And um, some baby boomers like myself may never retire, um, but that's just me. And um, there, that's going to have a huge effect on our real estate market. And I forgot to say, if you found us here on YouTube, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And I put out information about retiring here, living here, things to do here, communities here, 55 plus communities, active adult communities, do it on a weekly basis. So it's free information. And I try to be very to the point about what's really going on in the real estate market. So again, subscribe, hit the notification bell. So yeah, baby boomers retiring and coming here. It's had a huge effect on our market for quite a while. The new construction market is still going crazy here. And um, that will continue for quite a while. So tomorrow is election day. That's going to have a huge effect. We don't talk about religion or politics in real estate, but we do have a uh, pro business side and a what I would say not pro business side. And I'll let you figure out which side is which. So I do think that's going to have a huge effect on the uh, real estate market and the economy in general, actually. So um, I believe that will affect mortgage rates, which has completely changed the dynamics in the real estate market because for many years, we were in the two and 3% interest rate for mortgages, more affordable homes. And um, with interest rates at six and a half to 7% and second home interest rates being eight, eight and a half percent, it has put a huge cramp on the purchasing power of people coming here. Now, again, going back to baby boomers, probably 50% of the baby boomers coming down here are paying cash. They've either cashed in their investments or they've sold a home or maybe both don't want a mortgage payment and they're coming down here and um, paying cash. So that's huge. Builders are to the point where they have a lot of inventory. So their mortgage companies are act, uh, offering huge incentives again. Now, it varies from builder to builder and community to community. Some of them are offering twenty-five dollars to $30,000 towards your closing costs and upgrades in the house that you're going to build. So that's huge. So just keep in mind that when they say towards your closing costs, remember two things that the builder puts what is traditionally costs that are split between the buyer and seller on a resale, that is all put on the buyer. The builder pays basically none of those things. So keep that in mind. And also I had somebody ask me yesterday about using a real estate agent for new construction. Keep in mind that the salesperson for the builder 
amazing. They know everything that's going on in the community. They know uh, new lots that are going to uh, become available, the model homes. Fabulous. I work with a ton of them. But they work for the builder. So keep that in mind. They're there and they do make a lot of money. Those salespeople make lots of money and they're there to make as much as they possibly can. So have somebody that represents you in the transaction. Take an agent in with you that knows the community, probably knows one of the salespeople there that, <coughs> excuse me, my allergies are going crazy, that can help you find all the incentives, find out where values currently are. What are the comparable sales in that community? Has the builder skyrocketed the prices because they're closing out a community and you may be overpaying? Or have they dropped prices because they have so much inventory? Which one is it? Um, so yeah, have a agent go to new construction communities with you to help you with all of those things. Which way do you want your house to face? Uh, which is best? Is it north, south, east, west? Do you want sunsets every single night? Um, what upgrades can you do after construction and save a lot of money? These all affect this real estate market. A lot of people don't realize that when you're working with a builder, they have a uh, contractor and then they have a contractor and then they have subs. So there's a lot of hands in the pot. So if you want to do, let's say an outdoor kitchen, if you wait till after construction, you can save a ton of money. So I just happen to have contacts for all those kind of things, pool builders, outdoor kitchen, painting, flooring, whatever it is. But anyway, that affects our real estate market. So again, builders are offering lots of incentives. So find out what those are. So you may be able to, here's a hint, use their mortgage company, take advantage of the incentives that they're offering. And then you can pay off the mortgage anytime you want. A week after you close on the house, you can pay off the mortgage. There's no prepayment. So there's my free tip for you right there. So it was worth watching this video. Take their $35,000, take the mortgage, close on the house. One month, six months, one year later, you can pay it off and there's no prepayment penalty. Okay. Got to make sure it says that, but 99.9% .9 of the time there's not. Okay. So mortgage rates, what they're offering our taxes. Yes. Our taxes have gone up. What happened was from the COVID days, our prices went up about 28%. So we've come back down. We've probably come down 15 to 18% of where we were in say March of 2022. We've come back down. We're getting back to what I call normal. So that's had a huge effect on our property taxes. You'll see videos out on YouTube. Uh, my property taxes doubled when I bought this home in Florida. Well, you have to understand how the taxes work here. And I'm not going to get real deep into this, but if you're buying a resale home and those people, let's say they've been in the house for 10 years and homesteaded that house, their assessed value started back when they purchased and it only goes up especially if they're a homesteaded property, it only goes up so much per year. So when you buy that house, it's going to be reassessed the following January. And then your taxes are going to be based on that, not what the previous owner was paying. That's a huge difference. Some of the videos I watch on YouTube are talking about new construction. Oh my God property taxes went up by $8,000 from what I thought they were going to be. Well, let's say you have a house, this is 2024, and you have a house that's going to be finished in uh, March of 2025. Okay. So it shows, I've got one right now where it shows the property taxes of $1,200 a year on a home in a Dell Webb community. Well, you know, that's not right. All right. So what happens is when that home is completed, the following January, that home will be assessed and the new tax rate will come out. 
Okay. So yes, it's going to go from $1,200 on vacant land because there's not a completed home there. And then it's going to be reassessed and your taxes might go up to $6,000 or $7,000, depending on the cost and the size of the house. So that's what they don't tell you in some of those videos from these guys that are from out of state and telling you not to move to Florida because your taxes are going to go up by $7,000. I am going to tell you about homesteading real quickly. Again, a huge effect on the market. If you move here the day after you buy a house, you can go down and get a Florida driver's license. If you're going to homestead here and make this your residence, get a driver's license, register to vote and homestead the property the day after you buy a house. You don't have to be here for six months or anything like that. The day after you can do that. Now you can't keep your house in New York. I don't even know if New York has homesteading, so I won't get into that, but you can't keep your house up there as a primary residence and come down here and try to make this your primary residence. You can't do that. That's a huge crime now. So people were doing that a lot. Um, so yes, the day after you buy, you can homestead and that keeps your property taxes from going up more than 3% a year. They won't go up that. My example, we bought this house in November of 2018. My property taxes were $4,400. They've gone up in the six year period to about $4,800 over six years because we were homesteaded. As soon as I bought the house, we homesteaded it and we were locked in. Okay. So, um, CDD fees, whole different topic, but that has a lot to do with our real estate market as well. All the new construction communities here have CDD fees. That is basically this land was farmland. A lot of people will chime in and the keyboard warriors will say it was a swamp. You know, yeah, there's a lot of swamp in Florida, but to develop the land, whatever it was, roads, parks, Everything that they do, the sewer lines, they build the ponds for drainage, everything that they do there, there's a CDD fee that pays for all of that. And it's a 30 year bond that the builders take out. So that's part of your property taxes. So if you see $7,500 for the taxes for the year with a CDD fee, that's included in there. Okay. We pay our property taxes in arrears here. We get a trim notice typically in... October-ish, the taxes become due in the 1st of December and you pay backwards. Okay. So we'll in December, I won't, my mortgage company will pay my property taxes for the year 2024 in December, 1st of December, maybe even the end of November, because they know what the property taxes are going to be. All right. So taxes. Yes. And if you're not homesteaded, your property taxes are probably going to be maybe a percent higher than a homesteaded property. So if somebody is homesteaded, and I'm just using numbers, but if they're homesteaded and their property taxes are $7,500, a non-homesteaded property might be $10,000 because they can go up as much as the assessed value goes up every year. It's not locked into that 3% lock if you're homesteaded. I hope all that makes sense. Again, a huge effect on what's going to happen in 2025. Insurance. Some storms this year. Lots of damage. You'll see if you listen to the news or watch the news, it's all the bad news, of course. The homes that are waterfront were built in the 50s, 60s, 70s, even 80s here got hammered this year. Okay. If you look at some of those videos, the newer construction homes, they'll pan by those. They had little to no damage whatsoever because they were completely up to code. Our area, I live in an area called Palm Air. I didn't see any homes that were damaged. Now, pool cages, different story. Old pool cages, yeah, a lot of damage to those. Our pool cage was replaced before we bought this house, but it's up to the new code. We didn't even lose a screen on our pool cage. So you got to take some of it into effect. Yeah, single story home in a flood zone that got hit by that storm. Yeah, yeah insurance is going to go up. 
I bought this house. Our insurance was about $2,500 a year. I think we're at $3,100 a year. So again, over a six year period, I've gone up $600 and um, I've done lots of updates, you know, new windows, new roof, new sliding glass doors, all impact glass, uh, new garage door. So we've done a lot of updates, um, but yeah, our insurance still goes up. So with the storm activity, that's going to be an effect on the real estate market. So what's happened with a lot of the baby boomers who maybe were snowbirds, they're saying, well, our taxes are going up because we can't homestead. Our insurance is going up. Um, is it worth it to have that home down there? Is it, you know, should we just be renters again? What should we do? Um, to some, they don't care. HOA fees, that affects our market as well. Um, in an average Dell Webb community, we've got two of them locally. We've got two more that are starting. It's about 350 to 375 a month. Now it covers a lot, all your yard work, gated security, use of all the amenities. But if you're not here for six months of the year, those fees continue. You're paying that 350, 375 every month, whether you're here or not. So again, a huge effect on our real estate market. Um, as long as we talked about or talking about storms, I'm a Florida native, born and raised in St. Petersburg. This storm that just went by, let me get a sip of water since I'm talking so much. Milton that just went by, the first direct hit I've ever experienced in a storm. So, I'm 60 something years old. So in 60 years, that's the first direct hit. Now we stayed here, we have a generator um, and we stayed in our house. So we lost power for a couple of days, but we had our generator, which ran the refrigerator and the freezer and had the grill going and all that stuff. So is it an inconvenience? Yeah. Some areas like Lakewood Ranch where all the power lines are underground, I've got friends over there that never lost power during the whole entire storm. One of the ladies on my team, she's like, oh yeah, John, we sat and watched the news all night. Never lost power. So this area developed in the eighties and most of it is underground power lines. Um, not up to the newest standards like a Lakewood ranch, new construction. So it's a bit different. So yeah, we lost power for a couple of days. Not a big deal when you consider a pretty big storm went by. So, um, yeah, we do have storms. It's the first storm that's hit this area directly in a hundred years. Could we have one next year? Yes, we could. But again, state of Florida is a pretty big area and we have so much coastline from Galveston, Texas, all the way through, you know, the Georgia coastline, South Carolina, North Carolina, my son's in North Carolina. It gets some, you know, storm activity up there. Um, Obviously not as much as we do in Florida, but still get some up there. So that's happened. Inventory levels, huge effect on the 2025 market. Our resale inventory went from in 2022 to basically nothing. We're past six months of inventory and that's considered normal or equilibrium, six months of inventory. So we're probably past that right now. The builders have inventory, lots of it. So they caught up they had waiting lists for homes so they caught up the supplies caught up the work caught up so it wasn't the lack of supplies it was the demand for the supplies really and the demand for the workers to build the houses so you have the contractors then you have the subs who have subs and there just wasn't enough people to go around to do all the work that they needed done. So they've caught up the Pulteys, the Neil homes. They've all gotten back to where they want to be. They know how many homes they're building per month. So that's a good thing. But we do have lots of resale inventory. So people, especially people who um, are in communities that are near new construction. That's a big deal because people are looking at a new construction home or let's look, my home was built in 1983. So, 
you have to understand what you're going to undertake when you buy a home from 83. What has been updated? What hasn't been updated? I can tell you the interior of my home had been updated. <clears throat> the things on the outside, windows, sliding glass doors, the roof, not so much. Okay. That's been a lot of money. Okay. So we knew that coming in and we knew we would do it as we went along. But again, that's part of the market. So you can get a better deal on a uh, resale home. Builders have their price, which is their price. And, um, you know, that again, huge effect on the market. So it has shifted from a huge uh, seller's market, kind of got to equilibrium. And now I would say you're more in a buyer's market now just because of the inventory. Again, using the Dell Webs that we have here, Dell Web of Lakewood Ranch, all resales. I looked the other day, I think there's 29 homes on the market there. The Dell Web in Parish, it's called Dell Web Bayview. Um, there's a couple of resales there and the rest are the builder inventory. I think there was 40 homes on the market. So a buyer has the upper hand there. Now the builder's not going to fall all over themselves and go, oh, we're going to drop our prices. They're not. Um, what they do, they offer more incentives, especially with their mortgage companies to get you to come in there and check it out. So that's some of what's going to affect our 2025 real estate market. And again, this is for the central Florida, west coast of Florida area. I don't know what's going to happen even over in Miami. And I don't know what's going to happen in Massachusetts and Connecticut and California. I don't know. But for our area, that's what's affecting us. So inventory is high right now. Storm activity. Yes, we had a stormy year this year. Insurance rates are going to continue to go up by how much? I don't know. Um, I can't tell you that. Taxes? Depends. Are you homesteaded or non-homesteaded? Um, mortgage rates, wherever that heads to, that's going to be a huge effect on the market because a lot of those people are, were sitting on the sidelines because they had a 3.5% mortgage um, rate have tried to wait out the market and finally said, never mind, I'm selling, I'm getting out, I'm, I'm done. Whether they're going to get another mortgage or not, they're, they're doing it. So, and we do have an um, aging population here. I live in an area, Palm Air, <clears throat> that the population, it, we used to joke about Palm Air saying it's where old people's parents live. And all of a sudden I blink my eyes and I'm in old people now. <laughs> so anyway, but there's some elderly people here that are getting out. They've had enough. They're moving into retirement communities, whatever it is, moving closer or with family. So they're selling. So again, our inventory is growing. So um, if I can answer any questions for you, you can email me, you can call me, you can text me. Um, I will tell you, I get a lot of responses to videos. So I typically don't even look at the things that are posted on there, keyboard warriors, you know, so I don't, I don't. So just email me. There's a Calendly link. If you're watching this on uh, YouTube, you can use the Calendly link and you can schedule a phone call, Zoom call or an in-person meeting with me. And I'm happy to answer any questions for you about the real estate market. Happy to help you sell a home, buy a home, invest in real estate. Been doing this a long time. I can answer any questions that you have. I look forward to hearing from you and I hope I'll be able to help you find a home here in paradise. Okay. Take care. God bless. And I hope to hear from you soon.